This video is about installing a 540 motor in a quick drive RC toy. The motor we're installing is significantly larger than the stock motor. It can also be applied to a brushless 3650 motor since it has the same size as the 540 motor. You might not have the same RC car, but hopefully this video will give you some ideas for modifying your own RC. Welcome to Creek Mix and enjoy the video. Just a heads up, the power increases drastically and of course it gets much much faster. We'll discuss the challenges, costs, and speed test. Here's a size comparison of the 540 motor installed in the QD RC gearbox alongside the stock motor. As you can see, the 540 motor has a larger diameter and it is also longer. Remove the suspension by simply unscrewing the bolts. Unscrew these three bolts to detach the gearbox. Take the gearbox off the chassis. Remove the two motor lock bolts and take out the stock motor. For those who want to make their RC faster without modifying the stock gearbox, you can buy a brushless motor that matches the original motor size. In this case, a brushless 2845 motor has the same diameter as the stock motor. However, you'll also need a brushless ESC. One challenge with using a brushless 2845 motor is that it's quite difficult to find an 8T pinion gear like the stock one. That's why I decided to use a 540 motor instead, as its pinion gear is easier to find. Now, unscrew the three gearbox bolts and open up the gearbox. After that, we need to cut off the stock motor mount. You can use cutting pliers, a saw, a soldering iron, a mini grinder, or something similar. Next, we need to enlarge the center hole. If you don't have a mini grinder, you can use a file or sandpaper. Then, we need to flatten the outer part so the larger 540 motor can fit. Here's the final result. Actually, this part doesn't need to be completely hollowed out. As for the center hole, if you're using a 3650 brushless motor, you don't need to make it this big. Uh, this is because brushed 540 motors have a protrusion in the middle, while brushless motors have a flat surface, so a large center hole isn't necessary. The shaft size of a 3650 brushless motor is usually 3.17 millimeters and has one flat side, or a large D shape. This flat side is useful for securing the set screw or grunt screw. If your 540 motor shaft doesn't have a flat section, you'll need to file it down first. Otherwise, the pinion gear can easily come loose. You can use a large file, doesn't take too long, just a few minutes. A mini grinder works too, but a file usually gives a better result. Here's an example. It's not perfect, but at least there's a flat section for the set screw. For the pinion gear, I'm using a 17T HSP Flying Fish, which fits well with the center gear in my RC gearbox. To make the motor mounting holes, just estimate the position. Then, drill the holes or melt them with a soldering iron if needed. I'm using 6mm M3 screws to secure the motor. First install one screw. Now install the center gear. Make sure the pinion gear is properly aligned with the center gear. Um, this doesn't align well, so we need to flip the pinion's position. Next, adjust the gear tightness, or gear mesh. After that, install the second screw. One screw keeps the position fixed, while the other can be adjusted to fine-tune the gear tightness. Let's test it. It should run smoothly with minimal noise. Once everything is set, install the large gear. Since we're not using a long pinion gear like the stock motor, we can't change the gearbox ratio directly. So, uh, to adjust the gear ratio, we need to manually swap the positions of the large gear and the center gear. If the final gear is smaller, it means the top speed will be higher, but the initial acceleration will be heavier. I'm using a heavier ratio to focus on achieving higher top speed. Install the center gear, and also install the speed adjustment lever. Try turning it and make sure the movement is smooth. Anyway, you could also directly connect the motor pinion to the large gear. However, you'd need to buy a 32P pinion gear for that. Just so you know, when buying pinion gears, they typically indicate the number of teeth, T, and the pitch, P, or modulus mod. For example, 17T, 32P. 17 teeth has 17 teeth. 32P pitch, the smoothness or pitch of the gear. We can see the clear difference in the center gear. The gear connected to the large gear is 32P or coarser while the gear connected to the pinion is 48p or finer. The HSP Flying Fish Pinion has a 0.6 mod pitch, which is similar to 48p, though not exactly the same, but it can still be used. Next, we close the gearbox, install the three screws again, and mount it to the chassis in reverse of the disassembly process. We need to file down the chassis in this area because the motor is larger and it's hitting the chassis. Don't file too much, just enough so that the suspension can still move. For testing, I'm using foam tires that are typically used for RC speed runs. There's a video on how to change the wheels to 12mm hex. Check the description for that. For the electronics, I've upgraded to proportional. 
I didn't get the chance to test if I could use the 540 motor with the standard electronics. But for sure, when replacing the motor with a higher powered one, make sure the ESC or RC electronics are strong enough to power the motor. If the car becomes slower after replacing the motor, it's likely that the RC electronics aren't supplying enough current to the motor. For upgrading electronics, you can check out another video. The link is in the description. For the ESC, I'm using the BDESC S10E, which costs around $8. For the first trial, I used a 2S or 7.4 volt battery made from two 18650 cells. The top speed reached 31 kilometers per hour, which is 10 kilometers per faster than the standard motor that only hit 21 kilometers per hour. Not only has the top speed increased, but the power is also much higher and the acceleration is much more responsive. With all that power, the speed adjustment lever couldn't handle it. This caused gear loss because the center gear shifted. As a temporary solution, I wedged the speed lever so it wouldn't lose. Unfortunately, during the next test, I was laid on the brakes and the car spun out, crashing its rear into a wall, causing the gearbox mount to break. So let's fix it first. For the gearbox, to prevent it from shifting, I used two M4 washers and two M4 nuts as spacers. I also added some grease to help extend the life of the gears. For the broken part, I just glued it temporarily, just enough to get it running again. Now I'm using a 2S battery, but it's an RC drift battery with 90C discharge rate. Using this battery gives more power and makes the car even more wild. When turning and then gassing it full, the car starts spinning out. The top speed reached 36 kilometers per hour. Next, we try using a 3S or 11.1 volt 70C battery. With the 3S battery, the speed becomes even crazier. On the tennis court, I couldn't go full throttle because the car would spin out easily even though I'm using tires with decent grip and the differential gear is still active. After a few tries, the maximum speed reached 38 km per hour, which is definitely not the top speed, so the maximum speed is still unknown. I need a longer track to find it out. For the motor I'm using, it's an RS540 SH822 with a max RPM of 20,800 and it costs around $3. If you want a faster motor, you could get a 17T motor or even a 13T motor for more speed. Don't buy a 5-slot motor for an RC crawler because its rotation is slower. For the BDSC S10A ESC, I've been using it with a 3S battery, and it's still safe with no damage so far. As a note, the ESC gets pretty hot after about 10 minutes of use, so if you want it to last longer, I recommend not going full throttle the entire time. Also, I'm not sure about the long-term durability of the ESC when frequently using 3S or 11.1 volt batteries. So, if you want it to last longer, it's better to stick with a 7.4 volt battery. Lastly, if you buy a cheap 540 motor, it's recommended to install a 104 capacitor with the wiring as shown in the video. This will help protect the brushed parts of the motor and make it last longer. But if you're lazy to solder, it's fine to skip it. You won't feel much difference in performance. In conclusion, would I recommend upgrading to a 540 motor in my RCQD? If you want to experiment and have fun on the streets, then yes, it's enjoyable. However, I'll give a warning. If you upgrade to a 540 motor, you'll need to be ready for a lot of repairs. First, since the speed increases, any collisions will result in more severe damage. Imagine a 1 kilogram object hitting a wall at nearly 40 kilometers per hour. The chances of it breaking are pretty high. Second, since we have to modify the gearbox, some parts won't be as strong compared to the standard setup, especially with a larger motor's weight and power. Plus, there's a higher chance of gear wear. Lastly, if the car is intended for drift, especially for this RC, there's no need to replace the motor. If you do, the car will become too wild and hard to control. In drifting, precision control is crucial. Thank you for visiting my channel, Quite Mix. I hope this is helpful to someone out there.